What's up everyone, it's your boy Nornrad89 here bringing you another video and you know what time it is. It is finally time for us to sit down and rank all the Scooby-Doo shows. Yes, if you've been a fan of the channel and you've been following over the recent months, I've covered all 14 seasons of the Scooby-Doo show, all the different incarnations. So today we are going to rank all 14. You're going to see where they lay, why they're at, where they're at, and all that kind of stuff. But if you want to hear my thoughts, particularly on any specific one of the seasons, I'll have a playlist down in the description below where you can click on that. I have all my Scooby-Doo content there, so that's where you can find it. And like, like I said, if you want to hear my thoughts on any specific season, because like I said, this is going to be kind of a run-of-the-mill why they're at where they're at and stuff like that and the ranking getting all the way to the top dog the greatest what i think is the best scooby-doo incarnation so let's get down to this ranking roll it So yes, we have 14 different seasons and shows of incarnation, not just seasons, I mean 14 different shows to get through. There's multiple seasons for all these shows and all that kind of stuff, but 14 different shows to count down. So let's get right down to it. There has to be a bottom of a barrel. The last one, the absolutely the worst, the one I think is complete trash, and a lot of people are going to be surprised because I'm going to spoil it for you right now. It isn't Velma. Number 14 for me is going to be the Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo series from 1980, and this is absolutely the worst version of Scooby-Doo you're ever going to get. And Trust me, trust me. I have sat down and watched every episode, every minute of Scooby-Doo content there is to digest out there, and this show is complete trash. I feel like this is the show that when I watch it, I actually feel like I'm losing some of my intelligence. I don't like it. This is when they decided to shorten down and have three stories in one episode of Scooby-Doo, so the stories are only about six and a half to seven minutes long. We have Scrappy-Doo in here again for the third or yeah, third season in a row, and it's absolutely just the creators just shoving Scrappy-Doo in your face. Plus, we have complete episodes that have to do with Yabba Dabba Doo and Scrappy-Doo and have nothing to do with the gang of Mystery Incorporated at all. You know, Daphne's gone, Fred's gone, Velma's gone. We get no excuses for any of it, and it's just, like I said, the absolute worst Scooby-Doo content. I don't really want to return to this season. Next up, we have Shaggy and Scooby Get a Clue, which this was on CW. And for me, in terms of the animation style, the, the story that they went with, and having Shaggy and Scooby as the main characters, there's just certain decisions that they made. Like, I don't think Shaggy and Scooby are absolutely the worst thing in this show. But they relegate Fred and Velma and Daphne to the background. And this has a very convoluted, complex plot that isn't entertaining or engaging at all. And like I said, the animation style, this is probably, out of all the shows, the 14 incarnations, this is absolutely my least favorite animation style. It's just not pleasing to the eye at all. The theme song is completely just worthless. So yeah, Shaggy and Scooby get a clue. There's really nothing to offer. This was one of those shows that when I was digesting and deciding to do this uh, series and watch all the Scooby-Doo content and reveal, review all the shows, Shaggy and Scooby get a clue was one of the ones that I'd never seen before. So this was a first time watching. It was actually really rough to get through some of these episodes. I struggled to like continue and finish this season. Now coming in at the number 12 spot, we finally have Velma. I know a lot of people are surprised because a ton of people out there expected Velma to be at the very last spot. But the reason Velma is higher than Shaggy and Scooby Get a Clue and Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo is because this season actually has potential. Some of the writing in this show is actually really smart and the dark twisted comedy, heavy R-rated comedy that they go for. I'm all for that. I'm a fan of South Park. I grew up on South Park. I fucking love Drawn Together. So there's shows out there that do this kind of comedy that I'm very in line with. But where this show loses its ground is in the 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th. So the last four episodes, the creators just hammer down their social commentary and they double down on stuff that they want to say and talk about and they kind of lose the story and a lot of the side plots just don't even get like solved or anything so 
basically the last four episodes they just lose themselves and they just gets completely thrown against the wall we do have a season two coming though so i'm holding out hopes that they can improve it because like i said in terms of the three shows that we have at the bottom i think velma was the show that literally has the most potential because the other two shows below this i'm telling you or awful like i struggled to finish those last two shows before this and velma had me intrigued for a while but then it lost me at the end there coming in at the number 11 spot we have scooby-doo and scrappy-doo i believe this is 1979 and this was the first incarnation that introduced scrappy-doo into the series there's still a really good theme song there's still really strong atmosphere and in terms of 11 on up I feel positive vibes for all these Scooby-Doo shows. From 11 on up, they're all shows that I would return to often. Velma is one that I want to watch again because when season two comes out, I want to really go into it knowing the story again and see how they land it and where they take it. But in terms of shows right now, my vibes from 11 on up, all positive. I love all these shows and these are all shows that I would return to and everything. So yeah, Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo, this first incarnation with Scrappy-Doo is not that bad. You know, they're really softening it up, introducing Scrappy-Doo. It has a lot of the strong atmosphere from Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? There's some really cool mysteries and even the drawing, like the uh, design of the characters is similar to Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? So this is where they haven't strayed too far away from the content. They haven't erased or taken away any characters or anything like that. They just add in Scrappy-Doo. And like I said, he's not too overpowering. He's not too chewing up too much scenery or anything like that. So at this point, I'm, I'm okay with it. So yeah, this one is still positive in my book, Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo from 1979. Coming in at the number 10 spot, we have the new Scooby-Doo Mysteries, and this was the last incarnation of Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo before we got to 13 Ghosts Scooby-Doo, and we brought in Flin Flam and all that kind of stuff, so this is when the creators and Hanna-Barbera and the writers kind of knew we're taking this into a wrong route. This is the season right after Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo from 1980, which was complete trash. They increased the episode length, so there's two stories in each episode, and Scrappy-Doo's still in it, but they bring Daphne back, and Daphne's actually kind of the leader of the Mystery Incorporated crew, and we have this nice balance because Scooby-Doo and Shaggy are the goof-offs. They're the silly crew there for the laughing comedy, and Daphne and Scrappy-Doo are actually kind of like the heads of the group and the ones that get the mystery solved. So I think this uh, incarnation has a lot of different stuff in it, but a lot of fun stuff that kind of calls back to home. Like I said, bringing Daphne back. And Daphne has a new style, a new look too, where she changes it up a little bit here and there. So yeah, the, this one, the new Scooby-Doo Mysteries, still a positive in my book at this number 10 spot. Now, dropping in at our number nine spot, we have Scooby-Doo and Guess Who, and this was the modern version of the new Scooby-Doo movies, which is basically having more modern celebrities like Whoopi Goldberg and Ricky Gervais and Sia join the Scooby-Doo crew and team up with them. We even bring back, you know, some of these iconic characters like the Blue Falcon and Captain Caveman, you know, some of these other Warner Brothers type characters that have cartoons too. So... The new um, Scooby-Doo Guess Who is still one that, like I said, positive vibes. It's just for me, I'm not that high on the new Scooby-Doo movies in general. It's not one of my favorite favorites. So Scooby-Doo Guess Who being a modern version of that, it's not really going to climb up the list that high. Nine is still a lot higher than some of the ones down below. Like I said, I still highly enjoy this more than the five that are below this. But in terms of shows, yeah, Scooby-Doo, guess who? It really hinders itself and relies very heavy on do you enjoy the celebrity or the guest star that week? And one positive to this that I would say compared to new Scooby-Doo movies is that it actually has just a normal episode length because the new Scooby-Doo movies, they went for hour-long episodes and this is just a normal like half-hour-long thing. But Scooby-Doo, guess who, like I said, there's still some episodes where I don't really care about the characters. It's not that funny. It doesn't land as much. So it's kind of like a half and half type show. You know what I mean? There's some episodes I really enjoy and then there's others that I can take it or leave it. 
Coming in at our number eight spot, we have the Scooby-Doo Show, and this was the last incarnation of the show before we introduced Scrappy-Doo, so this was about 1977 or 78, the Scooby-Doo Show. This had a couple different names at first, but now it just falls under that banner. This is the last show that really feels like Scooby-Doo, Where Are You, where it's an extension of that. We have the same characterizations for those characters, the villains, the atmosphere, the vibe, even the theme song. It's all very similar to Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? So this one calls back to home. So that's why it's sitting here at this number eight spot and why it's a little bit higher than Scooby-Doo, Guess Who? And, the, you know, the new Scooby-Doo mysteries and stuff like that is because this one is a very much an extension, a sister to that Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? And that's a very, you're going to find that very high up on the list when we come down to the rankings. There's still some fun villains, some fun characters and stuff. So this one, I have a lot of praise for this one sitting here at the number eight spot. Coming in at number seven, we have the new Scooby-Doo movies. And the reason this one's a little bit higher than Scooby-Doo, Guess Who, and some of the other ones is because I love the guest stars in this one better. We have the Harlem Globetrotters. We have the Three Stooges. We have Batman and Robin, you know, all kinds of fun characters. Don Knotts. And these are people that me, for being somebody who didn't grow up too much in the 60s and 70s, I'm an 80s baby, and you all know that, 89. So I still was raised on some of these actors and some of these people and these characters and stuff, you know what I mean? So the new Scooby-Doo movies was also ones that they reran. The reruns happened a lot when I was a child on Cartoon Network. So that's another reason to nostalgia. I love the guest stars in this one. So new Scooby-Doo movies just has a lot more to offer for me. And like I said, this is the first run of the TV show, only run of the TV show where they went for hour-long episodes when you watch them without the commercials they're about like 43 or 47 minutes something like that but yeah it's it's another show like I said like scooby-doo guess who it really hinders itself on if you like the guest star because i can see the new scooby-doo movies if kids who are younger than me who are 10 and 15 years younger than me they're not going to know a lot of these people so they might not enjoy these episodes because they'll be like i don't even know like who this guest star is and they don't know the comedy they're not going to know where it's coming from so but me for me yeah like i said there's a lot of nostalgia with this season and i've talked to a lot of people on facebook and twitter the new scooby-doo movies is one that they they recall they remember this is a very memorable couple seasons of scooby-doo so there's a lot to offer with this show sitting very comfortable here at the number seven spot Coming up at number six is What's New Scooby-Doo, and this is the modern version of Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? And this was the biggest gap between Scooby-Doo incarnations because we had a pup named Scooby-Doo that ended ended in 1991 and then we didn't have scooby-doo or what's new scooby-doo we didn't have that until about 2002 so it was the longest gap ever between different incarnations of the show and like I said they really went back to home with home base with this one like I said it's very much like scooby-doo where are you the design of the characters and the the animation style and the drawing is very much updated even the technology and all that kind of stuff but it's still the same formula from the Scooby-Doo Where Are You show where they follow, they've tracked down this mystery, they've tracked down the bad guy, unmask the bad guy, and it's typically, you know, a human and stuff like that. And Fred has these awesome traps and the more updated, you know, mystery machines. So yeah, Scooby-Doo, this one really is fun because like I said, it brought back fans from a younger age that were like, oh, let's take a, because it's been so long, let's get younger kids involved in Scooby-Doo. So let's kind of just, revamp it make it a little bit more stylized and stuff and so older people who are fans of scooby-doo where are you like me can watch this season and be really invested in it and could latch on to it easily because it's very similar to scooby-doo where are you but that's kind of like i said the minor negative is that it doesn't stray too far away from the formula it doesn't try to be anything different there is different storylines and continuous storylines that do happen in this one but, you know, that make the characters more three-dimensional. So there's a little bit more in that realm. But, yes, this one is still a really fun one. What's new, Scooby-Doo? I've talked to a lot of people, and some of them have it very high up on the list. Me sitting in number six spot, that's still very high. We're about to approach the top five right now. So it just, just was out of that top five spot. Now we're here at the top five. And before we get down to that, be sure to consider dropping a like on this video. That definitely helps out. Share this video if you love the content and subscribe if you're new to the channel. That greatly helps out. So sitting here at the number five spot opening us up is 
13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, which was the first version of the Scooby-Doo show that had a continuous storyline that ran all the way through. There's, I believe it's 13, or yeah, I think there's 13 episodes in this season. They deal with the ghosts, and it's really cool because this one's just Daphne, uh, Shaggy, Scooby, then we have Flim Flam, and Scrappy-Doo. So it's a total different five, like group of five crew that you're dealing with in this one. But we have, you know, Vincent Van Gogh in here, voiced by Vincent Price, so that's really fun. A really cool element to add to the show that I love because me being a horror fan and loving Vincent Price and some of the films and the horror stuff that he's done for us. He's a fantastic actor being in this show that really elevates this show. And like for me, sitting here at this number five spot, I have so much fun with 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. Really my only negative is that I wish the show was a little bit longer. I wish we had a few more episodes, but I think it, it when you think about it, it is a nice, neat packaged grouping of episodes that just hits they deliver on their story and they don't try to overstay their welcome so maybe if they went on and continued and had a second season they probably would have overstayed their welcome and people would have got tired of it but yeah as it sits right now at the number five slot we have the 13 ghosts of scooby-doo a very fun incarnation of the show rolling in at our number four spot we have be cool scooby-doo which was the biggest surprise out of all these shows in terms of first time watches be cool scooby-doo was the biggest surprise and daphne being one of my favorite characters in the group it's daphne and shaggy daphne this is the most fun she's ever been like be cool scooby-doo is absolutely the most rewatchable show in terms of like some of the comedy that they do. It's just hilarious. I watched Be Cool Scooby-Doo the episodes twice. I watched this season twice all the way through because it just, it was like a binge worthy season, man. It's so funny. It's so much fun. Daphne, Fred, all the characters are some of their most quippy, witty, one-liner characters. One minor negative, I would say, is that I think Scooby-Doo actually talks a little too well in this one. Like, he's very intelligent. Like, he's he's very linguistic and very intelligent in this season. But also, another fun thing about Be Cool Scooby-Doo is that the very best version of the Mystery Machine is in this season. I'm talking, like... Batman, Batmobile worthy, you know, James Bond, you know, Ashton Martin worthy vehicle. It has all kinds of tech, could transform into a plane, a sub, has, you know, a lab in the back of it. There's so much to love about the version of the Mystery Machine that's in this season. So Be Cool Scooby-Doo is one of those shows that I highly recommend. If you haven't seen this one, this is one out of all the 14 shows for real. If you haven't seen some of these be Cool Scooby-Doo is the one that I highly recommend you go search out because you're going to have so much fun with this show. Coming in at our number three spot, we have Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated, which is a really fun one because this one goes with the route of 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo having a continuous storyline all the way through. And I think Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated has the most three-dimensional versions of all our characters, Shaggy, Scooby, Fred, Daphne, Velma, they all have a lot to them, a lot of layers. It's like onions. You just peel it back, peel it back, and there's more layers. Even their parents are very heavily involved in these two seasons. My only negative with Mystery Incorporated is that they canceled it too soon and that there should have been a third season to this show. But yes, this one is very fun. The story does get a little too convoluted and too complex, but if you're into a very deep plot if you're into backstabbings and you don't know who to trust and there's a something secret behind every door mystery incorporated is going to be right up your alley and there's a lot of elements to the show that are fun in terms of the animation style the villains are a lot of fun as well so that's why it's so high up on the list number three after watching mystery incorporated again i was just there's so much to love about this show, for real. There are some drama moments and some things that get tiring. But after you get past those four, first four episodes, which was very drama heavy, the story does kick in and we really do get it, get it rolling. Now we're here at the top two and we're finally here. It is almost time to end this ranking video. And once you hear my number two, you're going to know what my number one is. But coming in at the number two spot is going to be the OG, the granddaddy, Scooby-Doo, Where Are You, the classic from the 1960s, the one that started this whole thing that if we didn't have this show, there would be none of these other 13 shows on this list. And Scooby-Doo, Where Are You, the reason it stands the test of time is because it's very simple. It's kind of like John Carpenter's Halloween. It's very simple. It's like comfort food. 
the atmosphere, the music, all of it, it hits home. It's heavy nostalgia. And like I said, with Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? They didn't try to be something too much that they weren't trying to stray away from content that was out right now. You know what I mean? They did a very serial sitcom-y type show. Simple storylines that were wrapped up in 30 minutes with these really cool theme songs and these chase sequences and introducing us to Scooby, Shaggy, Daphne, and Fred, and Velma for the first time. There's just so much to love about Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? So this is just an OG classic that stands the test of time. And for real, every time I return to it, there's really no reason not to love this show. So now that you know Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? is the number two one, you know... What the top dog is, the number one spot is a pup named Scooby-Doo, which is just absolutely the most binge-worthy, the most, just the best in terms of music, how much fun I have with the Scooby-Doo shows, and in terms of nostalgia, it's very heavy, so that plays a lot into where it's at in terms of the ranking, is that this is the show that I remember the most, being a child, sitting down, having my favorite snacks, and just enjoying it after school watching a pup named Scooby-Doo. So this is why it's sitting here at this number one spot. It's because there's heavy nostalgia, but I also think that the characters, the dialogue, the writing is some of the best it's ever been in Scooby-Doo is this one. Pup named Scooby-Doo has a lot of fun characters and even the jokes that they reoccurringly do on every episode, like the red herring joke with Fred Jones, it's absolutely funny. It still lands every time. Daphne is absolutely hilarious in this season. Shaggy and Scooby, you get to see how they really build their friendship and their kinship because this is the first ever show that's a prequel show to all the other shows. So that's why I love A Pup Named Scooby-Doo too is it's a prequel show that has answers and questions that I actually love, that I enjoy that they answered, and I have fun with the show every time I watch it. So A Pup Named Scooby-Doo is just very strong sitting here at this top spot and i hope you all enjoyed this video i know i've kept you here for a very long time i don't want to run this video i think this is already approaching almost 20 minutes so i hope you all enjoyed this ranking video of all the scooby-doo shows please let me know down in the comments of all the ones that you've seen which are some of your favorites what are your favorite episodes all that kind of stuff share it down below and be sure to like this video share this video subscribe to the channel and if you want my thoughts on any particular season more in depth the playlist will be down below but most importantly i want y'all to have a safe and happy day peace out